Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, am I in a slump? It's my very short weekly wrap up. So normally when I do these weekly wrap-ups, I have a fair few books to talk about. Today, I've only got three books that I finished this week uh, to talk to you about, which for me is is not very many. I'm usually, usually five plus. I think last week I was seven or eight. Um, so yeah, it's been a very busy week at work and I haven't been feeling very well physically either. I've got some problems with my ear, which don't seem to be going away. Um, and all of that has impacted my ability to read as much as I normally do. Um, so yeah, it's been a relatively quiet week for me reading wise. I do have three things to talk to you about um, though. So, so we'll do the normal format for this. I'll talk to you about what I've been reading, talk about what I think I'm going to be reading next um, and then talk a bit about what's been on the channel. Um, but let's start with some stats. So um, I've also, as well as not reading many books this week, I haven't bought many books either. So, or, or have I? Well, we'll see. We'll, I'll, I'll let you decide in the comments um, how I should how I should tackle this problem I've got. So, as I said, I've read three books. Um, and I have bought one book this week. So this morning, I happened to be looking on Amazon and saw that uh, Legends of Nartes by Travis Baldry, which is a book I've been wanting to read for ages, uh, was reduced to 99p on Kindle. So, so I grabbed a copy of that. But that was the first book um, I've bought this week, apart from a Humble Bundle <laughs> that I bought yesterday. So Humble Bundle are doing a deal. Uh, I can't remember what they call it, but but basically it's it's a load of comics uh, with female main characters. So it's got like the Saga series by uh, Brian K. Vaughan, which is supposed to be excellent. Paper Girls by Brian K. Vaughan as well. Um, another series called Monstrous, which I've heard good things about, and a couple of other things too. Um, and as with these Humble Bundle digital book deals, it was you know it was a really really good deal. Um, so there are 52 books, <laughs> so there are 52 books, 52 comics, 52 volumes of, of comic art in that deal, um, all of which I now own. So do I count Do I count that as, as buying a book? I suppose I probably should. Um, so on that basis, I've read three books this week uh, and bought 52. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's less good, isn't it? Um, I have read some, I did read some manga as well actually last weekend, so I haven't carried those. So that will be another seven things. Uh, so I'll talk about those in my manga video, which will come up on Monday. Um, so yeah, not counting the Humble Bundle for the month so far, I've, I've got 26 books in my out pile uh, and 22 books in my in pile. So I'm, I'm four books ahead if you don't, <laughs> if you don't count the 52. Um, right, let's move on then. So let's talk about what I've read. So three books read this week. Um, so the first one was The Princess Bride by William Goldman. So this was a reread for me. Uh, this was the pick this week for, sorry, sorry, this month for my birthday book club where we read books that were chosen by people in the club um, as being their favourite book from the year they were born. This was my pick. So I pulled rank um, this week. Uh, oh, sorry, this month. Why do I keep saying week? I pulled rank this month um, because it was my birthday last month. And uh, so I decided we'd read my uh, my birth year book this month. So far, I don't think anyone else is reading it, but I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, and I've got a video review of it, which will go up in the week ahead. Um, so if you've seen the movie of The Princess Bride, you know most of the story. Um, but what the book has is a load of other stuff as well, which is really, really entertaining. So I, I had a really good time with that. Um, I then read uh, the, uh, This Sweet Sickness by Patricia Highsmith. So this is uh, a, it was a buddy read with Anne uh, from the channel Anne Novella. So we're doing an ongoing project to read all of Patricia Highsmith's books. Um, this was really good. So Highsmith, when she's good, is just fantastic. Um, so this is a book about this weird guy called David who's obsessed with this woman who he's had some kind of relationship with in the past, but she's now married and he's obsessed with her, keeps on writing to her, keeps on trying to persuade her to leave her husband for him. And she's basically not interested. But David's also got this kind of alter ego. So he's David during the week and then at the weekend he adopts a completely different name and he's got a different house he goes to and lives in. And his, his aim is to, to lure this woman and get her to come and live with him in that house. So it's a kind of strange setup, slightly thrillery setup, um, which Highsmith, you know, kind of builds up well. 
there's a section in the middle of the book where I felt it kind of dragged a little bit where David's just trying to figure out what he's going to do basically and and you know kind of there's a there's a dramatic event fairly early on and it's about kind of the repercussions of that but I did feel like it could, maybe could have been a little bit shorter that section but then the final 50 pages or so was astoundingly good like some of the best writing I've read for a while I mean it was just amazing um, I won't go into you know what happens because um, it kind of would, would spoil the book a bit. But but really, I guess it's about it's about David's psyche and about his trying to balance these two personas that he's got. And it was just amazingly good, just really stunning. So yeah, if you haven't read this. I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it. I'm not going to do a standalone review for this one because I feel like I've done a lot of Patricia <laughs> Highsmith reviews um, over the last couple of months. But trust me, it's good. Um, then the final thing I read uh, this week, completely different. Uh, so I just finished it this morning. Uh, the Spirit by Thomas Page, which is a um, a Bigfoot book from 1977, republished recently as uh, one of the paperbacks from hell. So this was fun. I mean, it's a it's a Bigfoot book, so you kind of know what to expect. So about these two characters, one of whom's uh, like a kind of city, city guy who's gone hunting um, and he comes across this Bigfoot so he's, so he's hunting with some of his friends they come across this Bigfoot but there's also this Native American character who is um, obsessed with the Bigfoot and is kind of trying to protect it um, and things happen and the rest of, of the main guy's party um, die and the rest of the book is about him then trying to figure out what's happened trying to track down the Bigfoot um, but also trying to track down this Native American guy. And, and those two characters, the interplay between those two characters was actually really interestingly done, I thought, in the book, and they both kind of get equal billing. Um, the Bigfoot stuff was fun too. I did feel like there wasn't enough killing, <laughs> there weren't enough killings in this book. Um, it could have done with a bit more violence, particularly in the middle section, to kind of make it a bit more interesting. But the climax, which is absolutely action-packed, was really good fun. Um, so yeah, I had, I had a good time with this one. In terms of what I'm going to read next then, so I've got um, this book, which wasn't on my list for um, for this month, but it looks really good and it fits the Horror Mayhem um, vibe just about. And it is exactly 250 pages long, actually, this, this paperback edition. Um, so this is The Fall of the House of Thomas Weir by uh, Andrew Neil MacLeod. Uh, so the author sent me a copy of this recently. It looks really interesting. So a kind of historical... Um, horror novel set in 1700s uh, Edinburgh um, so it sounds really good fun and I posted it in a book haul the other day um, and Dave Brzezewski who's the publisher of Occult Detective magazine uh, pointed out in a comment that there's a um, there's a short story featuring the same characters as are in that book um, in issue 8 of Occult Detective magazine um, so I've read some of this issue but I hadn't read that story yet so um, I'm going to read that first I think before I read the novel so um, yeah so those will be the next two things I get to um, and then I've also got so picking up that Occult Detective magazine reminded me that I put a stack of kind of magazines um, on my pile to, to get through this month so I'm going to read some of these this weekend as well I think so we've got another occult detective magazine and then various issues um, from um, the kind of paperback junkie stable if you like um, so we've got uh, sleazy reader number nine uh, pulp, pulp, pulp apocalypse um, a pulp horror book uh, paperback fanatic issue four collected pulp horror so those all look very entertaining so i'm going to dip into some of those over the weekend i think and then also got from midnight magazine uh, i've showed these before so a few of those so a couple of issues of midnight tales um and then we've got three three issues of midnight magazine which is like so midnight tales is like short stories um midnight magazine is more about the horror genre generally so articles and things like that as well as stories and little comic strips and things i think so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna dip into some magazines um, this weekend as well as reading some manga. So I'm reading manga on the weekends now, um, and uh, as as previously advertised, you'll, you'll get a manga video on Monday where I talk about what I've been reading. So in terms of channel stuff, then um, in the last week you've had a video I put up yesterday, which I quite enjoyed doing, which is where I theorised that uh, there are certain authors who've become successful or who owe at least some of their success. To the fact, to the fact that their names are alphabetically close to more famous authors. Um, I also did a, um, a 
a video about indie horror books I'd read recently that I really enjoyed. Uh, I did a book haul video uh, and a review of The Cement Garden by Ian McEwan. Um, and then in the week ahead, you'll get that manga video on Monday. Um, I'm going to do my announcement video for Dune on the Range. So Dune on the Range, if you don't know, is a Western-themed reading event uh, created by a fantastic Michael K. Vaughan, which takes place every June. Um, so I'm one of the co-hosts for that, along with a bunch of other people. So I'm going to do a video for that, just talking about the books I'm thinking about reading for that. Um, and then you'll also get a, um, a review of The Princess Bride, um, and my final abominable book club unboxing uh, unboxing video for for now at least so i've i've decided to pause my abominable book club uh, subscription um so i've got uh, i've got the most recent box the way box so i've done an unboxing video for that and i'll talk a bit about why i'm pausing my subscription as well um so yeah that's that's what you can look forward to uh, should you <laughs> look forward to stuff like that um on the channel in the next week Okay, time for a, a random book from the shelves. So those those kind of paperback fanatic uh, magazines I was just looking at reminded me of this. Uh, so from the, uh, what do they call the Men's Adventure Library Journal, uh, this is Cuba, uh, Sugar, Sex and Slaughter, which is absolutely fantastic. So this is a, a selection of stories and articles and things like that from Men's Adventure magazines from kind of the 50s and 60s, which were, you know, a huge part of the um, American magazine publishing industry at the time and used to publish kind of, you know, kind of adventure stories and slightly salacious stories and articles and things like that. So this volume, and they've done a few different things uh, at Men's Adventure Library. This volume collects stories about Cuba uh, and articles about Cuba and things like that, tracking from the kind of Batista regime, so the pre-communist um, regime in, in Cuba, through the revolution and into the Castro years. So really, really interesting to see how, um, how American attitudes towards Cuba changed over that time. Um, a really fascinating book and also just a lot of fun in terms of the, uh, the kind of stories it's got on it. It's got, for example, um, a, an article or a story called Terror, Cuban Hellcats uh, Scare Castro's Cutthroats. Um, so that's the, that's the kind of thing you could expect in this, but thoroughly recommended if that sounds interesting. So I hope you found that interesting. Do let me know in the comments if you've read any of the books I talked about. Let me know what you've been reading this week. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're really good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.